practice hours right now. Practice hours, you know what's popping. Boom. Practice hours. Practice hours. Oh. Practice hours. Oh. Practice hours. Practice hours. Practice hours. Practice hours. Practice hours. Big up A plus all the time, yeah. Realest DVD ever on the roads, yeah. Everything blessing. Practice hours. What's going on, people? It's DJ Argue, and today I've got a very special guest with me. This don't happen every day. This is exclusive. I don't think you've done this before, have you? I'm with the founder of Practice Hours, A+. Plus. What's happening, bruv? How's it going, Argue? You good? Yeah, all's Wicked. good. What, you don't like being in front of the camera then? No, I definitely don't. Why not? Uh, yeah, no, all my life I've been like a, a DJ and I say kind of like a behind the scenes kind of person. So yeah. mostly if you see me like, you see me in a picture maybe with Wiley, I'll be right at the back. Yeah, yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? You might not yeah. even notice me. Do you get what I'm saying? But yeah. um, I like that. I'm comfortable with that that kind of thing. I never really wanted to be so much of the the front runner or the performer, even as a DJ. I mean, like, when you DJ, obviously you have to DJ to hundreds and thousands of people, but I still still see it as like kind of like a behind the scenes role. You're not on the forefront like the MCs, are no, you? Like, no, 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 definitely not. So you obviously you started DJing first, right? Yep. So How was, did that come about? Uh, I suppose a love of music. Where did you grow up? Was it Bow? No, nah, I grew up in Hackney. You was in Hackney? Yeah. So how did your association with all the Bow lot happen? Was it through Rinse? Nah, so uh, before, not even before Rinse. So basically I didn't go to school in Hackney. All of my friends from school, well not all of them, uh, large majority came from Bo. So, like, he was DJing. Yeah. Where the hell did the camera stuff, like, come into play? Uh, was it something you always wanted to do, like, in nah, the back of your head? I, I wouldn't say it was something I always wanted to do. It was like... Early 2000s, I come from a Queen's holiday. So I done my Queen's holiday, came home, yeah. uh, before I came home, I was always, I was in contact with like uh, G, Wiley, Target, all of them. I used to phone them all the time. Uh, so when I came home, obviously I'm gonna start hanging around with my friends, what I used to do music with before. I didn't really find a, a, a footing in DJing again. Yeah, I kind of, I didn't, didn't really get on with, with doing DJing and radio sets. I didn't, didn't even like it really, to tell the truth. I think, mainly because of the uh the mixing style that was required it was like that like, really quick mixes and that and like i used to like long drawn out uh clashing mixes like long uh i don't know like say 64 bar mix or something where slimzy would just do a 16 bar mix and Not even that he would like, just bring it straight in do you get what yeah, i'm saying yeah. like real quick and i i didn't really like that kind of stuff myself i used to just hang just hang with my friends Every day, hang with my friends. Wiley will phone me. Yeah, come, let's go studio. Go studio. Just sit around, smoking, doing whatever. And then one day I thought to myself, actually, I seen them lot all looking at the computer every minute in the studio, talking about these forums and all this kind of stuff. Like, And I, I didn't really understand it that much. But what I did think is, well, I take this for granted. Wiley's my mate. I'm next to Dizzy. I'm next to Target. I'm next to Genius. I'm next to all these people. They're big people. Like they're they're actually like in my eyes, I'm like, yeah, they're my friends, but they are stars. Other people, or if, well, not, well, I wouldn't say other people, like the general population that listen to the music, they might want to see what goes on behind the scenes or they might want to put a name, I mean, a face to the name. 100%, because before DVDs like Practice Hours and the others came out, no one knew, unless you was from the area yeah. or you was hanging about with the people like you was, no yeah. one knew who people were. Yeah, yeah, you definitely. So I feel like that definitely did change everything for Graham forever. Do you yeah. feel the same? Yeah, I feel, I definitely feel that it, 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 it changed it. Um, it was, it, I think it was a necessity, really. Yeah. Like it was a, a natural progression. People 
had to see the 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 the, the faces behind the music, and I think that at that time it it probably helped to you know like grow the scene a little bit. So, did was your thinking like okay, you just want to get a camera and just just film what you're doing day to day? Did you ever think you wanted to put it out as a DVD right, so or was it just an archive for yourself? At the start, I didn't even have a plan. Basically, I uh, had a heart to heart with my with my ex girlfriend, and I said to her, "Oh look." Uh, I think I want to get a camera and I want to like start filming some of this stuff that Christmas bought me a camera so I just started from there and I was like I think I was still hanging around just like filming little bits and pieces and I remember one day Wiley said to me yo I'm having a dance tonight I'm having an Eskimo dance like come stand on the side just film it yeah. I'm like what do you mean just film it like what with my little camera like don't be silly like <laughs> yeah. he's like trust me just come film it went filmed it epic night obviously it's like the start of like you know like people being able to see who's clashing and whatever else the footage was dark as hell it was grainy as hell but it still retained a a vibe of everything what was going on yeah do you get what i'm saying and like uh i think like the week after i'd, I'd recorded that slimsy came to me and he was like look you need to put that onto a dvd because Mark from Riven Division wants to buy it. I was like, what do you mean he wants to buy it? Like, it's it's not worth it. He was like, trust me, it's worth it. Whatever you do, just find your way to getting that to a DVD and multiple copies and go and see Mark. I was like, all right, cool. Yeah. Went and see Mark, got paid. <laughs> So was that the start of it then? Yeah, that was the start of, well, the start of me thinking, yeah, this is something not worth it, but something I could get paid from. What happened next then? Where did the whole practice hours, the name, where did mm. where did it actually start? What did you, what right. was the first thing you actually filmed? What was going on in it? I head? don't know about the first actual thing that I filmed. I remember like, I didn't really have a specific plan at first. I had filmed like small little bits with like All In One, Stamina, uh, Merkstern. So as I've started to formulate the plan, I thought, all right, cool. One morning I woke up, I made a list of MCs, maybe like, 20 MCs and yeah, about 20 MCs, various different crews. And I was like, all right, cool. I'm gonna work my way through this list. Half of the people I didn't even know. I'd be rolling, rolling from my house. I live, live in Edmonton. So I'd be rolling from Edmonton on the A406, then down the A12 to come to Bow. Uh, and on a Monday, I would listen, I think it was a Monday, Monday or Tuesday where the Grime shows was on Deja. So, I'll always be checking them out. And I was like, yo, the Meridian guys, JME, Big H, they're sick. How come I ain't seen them before? Like these guys are so nang, like, like they're top of the list. Do you know what I'm saying? So for a memorable start of the DVD would have been the day that I checked JME probably. Like, Take me through that day then. So I basically just got his number off of someone, phoned him up, said, JME, my name's, Hey plus, I'm looking to make this DVD. It's going to be called Practice Hours. Uh, what are you saying? What? You in? He was like, yeah, I'm, I'm done. What do you want to do? Literally, he told me to come that night. So that hour after I spoke to him, I drove around the corner from my house and linked up with Jeremy. Bloody, we done a little bit of footage there. You can see it on the Practice Hours 1 DVDs, the part where he's in the car. No joke. Street fighter, so fuck the dojo. Onto the beef like Mojo Jojo. So don't come with no shouting shit because I'll leave you on the floor with a Coco. No joke. Uh, we done that little part. And then I got home, I reviewed it. And I was like, yeah, it's sick. But I want the rest of them. About two days later, went back to Meridian, linked up with everyone. So that was like, yeah, I think that was the the most memorable part from the start of the DVD. How are you feeling like when you're first filming like Skepta, Meridian? At the time I was thinking like, I'm getting the content, what I really like and 
I think it might make an impact. So after Meridian, what yeah. happened then? So after the after Meridian, uh, yeah, I just worked my way through the list every day, phoning MCs, going to link up with them. Uh, obviously, grime being grime, people fall out of the game. They come late. You phone them up. Uh, you arrange a day and a time. They can't make it. So I would just be patient, move on to the next person. If someone's not available today, I'm not going to make that not me. I'm not going to make that make me stay at home and not do nothing. I'm just going to roll onto the next man on the list, phone them up. Yo, what, we can do a little piece today? Fly around there like I just, I would just drive everywhere, all over London and whatever else. So where did the name Practice Hours come from? Me and Wiley used to roll. We used to come home sometimes like anywhere from 12 till four o'clock in the morning. We'd go ra sometimes go radio at that time and he'd be like, yeah, man, these are the hours of practice, you know? I'd be like, yo, you keep saying that and that 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 uh that translates to a a, a a catchy name you know what i'm saying a catchy title so i just put it instead of the hours of practice i just called it practice hours yeah you know what i'm saying so but yeah, wiley made it up so right so you didn't practice hours one what was the feedback on the streets was people did people know what was actually going on <clears throat> so i can only say the feedback so for me, the, the, the way that, I won't say, I keep saying the way that I am, in my personality, uh, don't really watch what other people are saying. So it wasn't like I was going to the forum or people were coming up to me and congratulating me or saying, mm. oh yeah, I seen your DVD is sick, whatever. I knew that I had something from my, my friend Gary, he was the distributor for it. And from he wants to distribute it, I know that it's something. G said to me, Yo, that's something. So I knew it was a decent product. Uh, I could tell maybe the response by my the sales. So I I don't even know how much I sold. All I know I was able to set myself up in the game to buy a new camera, buy a new computer, buy a new car, so I can further myself and you know carry on what I'm doing. So mm. I was able to do all those kind of things and had some money in my pocket for the time being so i knew well it can't have gone that badly if i could do this what did you prefer filming like radio sets or sort of your freestyles that you was doing on the street or yeah. raves set up interviews and freestyles was probably the the thing because uh when it came to the freestyles i the way i approached the freestyles i'd like go around get a load of beats or go to jammers jam will just let me on the computer and let me choose. Like, let me go through the files. So I'll choose my favorites. He might not think that they're that great, but I would like the tunes. So I'll go around, correlate a CD of 50 beats, what I really feel in. Yeah. So people would think that the MCs got to choose the beats. No, they never got to choose the beats because I already handpicked those beats to know that they was bangers all already and you choose from my bangers i reckon a standout moment on practice i was one mm. was the lethal and the wiley yeah lethal and wiley take me through the build-up of that whole day got to deja on the roof filming a set just like just like any other any other day like i, I don't never Never thought, oh yeah, this is gonna happen, that's gonna happen. Just there filming, 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 filming. And I remember just like, just thinking, it's Wiley, man. I swear he said he was coming radio today. And then all of a sudden he popped up. Mm. So I was like, all right, cool. This is this has trans transpired in front of my eyes. Like, just, yeah, just like a pretty normal day. Like obviously, it's always, it was always like, after the set's done and you've, I've, I've, I've come out of the room and I'm like, Yo, what looking at the spot? camera, I'm like, yeah, that was good. Like that was that. That's gonna be a moment. Why did you say shit when you spit a new rap? Me, new rap move more, don't more back, nigga. And if you know what I mean, don't want a time, nigga. And if you know I got down, I'm a line, nigga. Wanna rob that school, that's fine, nigga. Don't complain when you're better from a nine, nigga. When I got my chance, they was fine, nigga. Fuck that time, do something right now, nigga. This sad boy said he had a new rap, new rap, so I'ma catch him anytime. Ain't nothing for new, I'm right down for the time. So when the clash was happening, yeah, you personally, who do you think took that? 
He's gonna yeah. say Wiley, isn't he? No, 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 no. I definitely think that they both had their moments in the clash. I wouldn't say it it, it weren't a, a flat out Wiley one or Lethal Man, one. Like, like it was like it was quite quite equal. Like they both performed and gave bars as an as entertaining as the other. Mm. So yeah, no, I don't think any one of them took it. I think they just clashed and it was a memorable moment. Practice hours two. Yeah. How long, what was the time scale? Like, so practice hours one come out, what was that, 2000 and f You don't know, can't remember. You, you, I could not even recall the years. It's all a blur, a mesh, uh, I don't know. So, right, so, so practice hours two, you obviously got a new camera. Everything looked a yeah. bit more, yeah, yeah. a bit more solid, a bit more colorful. So, uh, towards the end of practice hours one, Target had uh, introduced me to a lady called Lucia. And she had just come out of film school and she was like, she's like really encouraging lady. So she was like, saw what I was doing. And she just gave me a few pointers. Told me like, sounds really important. Uh, your framing is quite important. Uh, you need to, you need to white balance your camera every time you go and do a new interview so that the colors match and they're consistent. Me just coming from, picking up a little mini DV camera. I don't, I don't know all of this stuff. Obviously I come from an audio background, so I know audio is important, but as for the, uh, you know, the aesthetics of how everything looks, I winged it. What stands out in practice hours too? Mm. People will say, I don't know, the Dogsy. Dogsy and Devlin. <laughs> Gender, Gender yeah. yeah. And that all in one freestyle in a car. Cause I remember we was driving along the A12 and he made me start the tune so many times that we were driving back and forth, back and forth, <laughs> back and forth on the A12. He's like, no, 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 another one, another one. If you're not all in one, he's like a, uh, he's quite a vain person. Okay. So he'd be like, you go for all in one. You basically have to wait about an hour for him to come out of his house. One day I went in his house to see what he was doing. He's trying on a million caps. <laughs> putting on different trainers, putting on different track suits, all before he comes yeah. out of his house. So I realized that is what he's all about, isn't it? So yeah. doing the freestyle is like, is my cap right? No, no, I didn't sound right. No, I didn't look right. Like, let me see that. Like, no, I changed the beat. Like, it was like that. Look, it's all in one, it's practice hours right now. You should know what time it is, man. You know you saw practice hours, the other one. You know what time it is when all in one's in the place. So it's like A plus, listen. It's all in one, yeah? I'm back up in the scenery and I've had enough of bigger niggas being mean to me. Some have got the machine to me. And now I was like, you ain't as big as you seem to be. Like you seem to see, because you see me from street to street. Whenever we meet with me, it's bait, it's not the street. What Dobsy. about Gets? Gets? That, went, that blew up. Yeah, that blew up. That so blew that's, up. That, 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 that's kind of mad. Like, well, I've spoken about it before was like, anyone with, as I said before, like anyone with like a really like a uh, strong personality, I kind of, I'm a little bit wary of. So, I used to go radio, I used to see Gets, and I used to think, I said, be nudging Wiley and be like, oh man, he's, he's a bit, bit mad, isn't it? Like, he's a bit like, it's a bit crazy. Yeah. <laughs> like, so I was like, me personally, I wasn't really into his style of the, and when I say not into his style, I weren't into that, like the whole shouting element of it. It's like, can't really hear you. Like, I, I don't, I didn't even really get it. That's the truth. I didn't even really get it. My friend Gary showed me the first ghetto's first ever mixtape. And I'm listening to it and I'm like, oh shit. When he's made a tune, I can hear everything what he's saying. I like the concepts. Like I like the bars. Like he's he's more than some MC that just goes on radio oh, and yes. spits crazy. Yeah. So from that first mixtape, I was like, yo, gotta get him. I'm a fan. Like I'm a fan now. Like he, that that mixtape. Convince me. So, 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 so Practice hours right now. You know what's popping off. We're gonna get into something. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What's happening? What's really good, cuss? What's crackling? I'm big in the hood blood. Still battling, still trying to push drugs. So when I see feds, they only see legs. Yeah, I'm still panicking. And I've left them fixed in the past, but I still hear snakes in the grass, still rattling. I think he even made a sneaky comment. Oh, you want me on the DVD now? And I was like, 
yeah, I do want you on the DVD now. But not only, not only that, not just because he was getting popular, but because I recognise now, I've actually heard music from him, which at that time everyone, everyone never had a mixtape. You know what I'm saying? So the mixtapes was kind of like a fresh thing, and I'd listen to his mixtape, and I was like, as I said, he, he's not just an MC; like he is a, a, a artist. Did you feel like you and Risky was in competition? Ah, uh, do you know what? Early on, I did, but there was something always telling me like that's a wrong way of thinking. Like to think that, in reality, it would be competition. That that's what it was because it's, it's it's a small thing. It's grime. It's a niche market. There's only a certain amount of products about of that kind, so it is competition. But I didn't look on risky as my competition. Do you know what Did I'm saying? Did you ever like, watch his stuff? To be honest, I watched clips, but I've never watched a whole. Risky Rose DVD. Why not? He didn't want his stuff to influence what you was doing? No. Or he just wasn't interested? No, not not even that I wasn't even interested. From the clips what I watched, I could easily identify that although it was the same kind of product, it was in a different way. So it was Risky's... I'm going to say Risky. So my mine is uh, Practice Hours was very much like from my perspective. So yours was a lot of, a lot of it was sitting bow, right? Like a mm. lot of it, like the majority of it, I would say was like Rico's, your, your wine. Yeah, like, uh, a lot on, of your on, mates. On, on, on practice, I was on one, one, definitely. Yes, definitely on one, on definitely Ross one. Won. Yeah. So I would say, uh, yeah, the, the, the differences is would be the, the perspective. So practice, I was one pretty much from my, my perspective, how I saw grime, who I liked. So, Risky roles would be from his perspective of who he, he like likes. Yeah, uh, like nasty. Yeah. And that, there's, you didn't film any of those lot. Why was that? No. So earlier on, not early on, I think I'm on the practice hours one uh, DVD. Around the time I was doing that, I had a look at uh, Lord of the Decks, not the whole DVD, but the lineup. And I didn't want to repeat that. So I, more of your nasty I, I, crew. Do you get what I'm saying? So I, I, for only for that reason, it's like I've never, and up to this day, never uh, filmed D double except for the the uh, the new practice hours that had D double in it. But I had never been in contact with D double, and it's only strictly for that fact that he had been on and featured quite heavily on Lord of the Decks. Uh, yeah, Lord of the Decks one. Why I never. Mm. Not that I didn't like him. I, I love D-Double, do you get what I'm saying? But just for that that fact. You wanted to give the people something different. different yeah. That explains it. That, that explains everything. So you didn't ever feel like you were risky, was in competition? No, 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 no. And I mean, at a stage, I always tell myself to not to watch what everyone else is doing. Like I used to have a saying, like, drive your car. Keep your head straight. Worry about what's going in, on in your car. Or if you start pairing into other people's cars, you might crash. So for practice hours one to two, yeah. how do you feel like the scene changed and developed? I think so. The scene developing, it was like, it was getting quite quite big, but it was still very much underground. Like uh, the uh, one extras and that kind of stuff was more embracing, embracing it and... I don't know, there was a few music videos getting made, so that was like more progression than just a tune being on vinyl, uh, than just tunes. I say mixtapes were now getting made, people were working with a view to make a whole pr project. That sort of, the freestyles on your DVDs were like the equivalent of the day, like of a fire in a booth. Yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. So I was like, definitely was comparable pretty, to that kind of stuff. Cool, that conflict yeah tell me tell me about the whole day you must yeah. remember that i do so yeah, I, what he I, remembers that what i remember <laughs> come radio film the set and i remember being there and i was like 
nothing ain't even going on. <laughs> like, it's not even bare MZ's hair. It's just, I think at first it was just like me, Gift, Dizzy, and maybe Wiley. And yeah, I was like, yeah, all right, just film, mm. just film. And then it's, as the night got on, well, not even the night, as the, the hour and a half got on, it was like, yeah, someone else has popped up. Now d was come through. Now Maxwell's come through. Now this person's come through. Now that person's come through. And I was like, I was thinking in my head, how is this going to pan out? How? And then I think that moment that I fought, fought that thought, Titch stepped in. Okay, okay, okay. Crazy Titch just touched down, yeah? Short major long side. And I was like, oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. This is how it's going to pan out. I was like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that I knew that there was going to be a clash or I knew anything was going to happen. I knew that it was, there was some kind of animosity between the two. I 100% knew that Titch didn't really care for Dizzy. Uh, maybe he kind of felt that he should be in Dizzy's place or he should be as big as Dizzy. Why is Dizzy getting all this attention? Like he's just some, any kid from Bo, like he's not better than me or whatever. So I knew he had that kind of thing. I knew Dizzy, not that Dizzy didn't care for Titch, Dizzy didn't really care anyway. Do you know what I'm saying? He just probably didn't want anyone on him. That's it. So yeah, I, I, as Titch stepped in, I was like, yeah, how's this gonna pan out? I knew that Dizzy, not gonna shy away. Like he's not just gonna run into the corner and like be no, I'm not gonna MC with these guys no more. Hey, he risked to the task. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, that transpired. Uh, a lot of people always say, oh, what really happened and how did it really go? And wh why is the reason that, that, that the argument started? And I think me being there, it was plain and simple. You didn't pass the mic on time. <laughs> tried to go over his time. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, we're doing whatever it is, 16s or 32s. Like, pass the mic on your, when you've done your 32, and mm. Like, you know, it's me and you here. Like, you're going to pass the mic back to me. I'm going to pass the mic back to you. You say your thing, I say my thing. Now you're trying to go over. Like, stop it. Like, behave yourself, it. Like, that was my view of what, what was happening. You know what I'm saying? So this is all kicking off. Like, Everything stops and they're all arguing and yeah. things comes through and yeah. What are you thinking in your head? Do you think you stop filming or? <sighs> yeah. Uh, so actually, I think right at the end before we went onto the roof, the actual outside roof part of it, I thought, oh, there's an argument going on out there. Do I take myself out there in the middle of the argument and start filming it, or how are people going to feel? about me filming it. So I think at a, at a time I did put my camera down a little bit, but then I did go out onto the roof. I don't know, something just told me, go film it, don't care. Just get the footage, decide later. I think Wiley, he didn't say stop filming. I think he's like, I'm getting dizzy out of here. Come, let's go. Cause we had all come together. So it was only a natural like, turn off the camera quick, get the bag. We all go to the car and then we was off. Mm. So that was that. So I don't think I, I don't think anyone made me stop filming, nah. But I did stop filming because of, we had to go. Did you think when he was on the roof, he's actually gonna kick? What actually happened? Just a bit of arguments? And... Yeah, arguments, uh, Titch running back and forth. The way I kind of saw it was, well, this is all bravado. I can kind of see it's bravado because you're running around the roof and Dizzy's actually standing still. You can get to him. Mm. Like, why are you running all around the roof, mm -hmm. shouting and Dizzy saying, look, I'm here, I'm here. Like, don't hold him. So yeah. I'm like, yeah, this is all bravado. It's not, it's not nothing too serious. No one's got actually gonna stab anyone or no one's gonna get shot tonight. Mm. It's, someone might hold a little punch or something like that. It might be a little scuffle, but that's probably gonna be it. I was one took, I'm not sure how long, maybe seven months or something like that. Practice I was two, took 
whole year, I basically ended up with so much footage that I had to make two discs. And I think I still even had more that couldn't fit. I had to cut that down. I was like, well, actually you've took a whole year to make that. It's too much footage. Maybe you need to make something in smaller installments. So I wanted to make uh, a DVD that came out quarterly. So I started making uh, a project, what was called PH, PH TV. Yep. So it's called Practice Hours TV. Uh, I made one volume of that. I put it out. It didn't really do too well. Yeah, what? Do you know what? I, I think people was expecting the full shebang, like you've done on yeah, Practice Hours 1. I, I think they and did. Seemed... I would say it was different. So the 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 what I called it was like a a lifestyle magazine. So I didn't just want to give all hard hitting moments. I wanted it to be about a variety of things, which would be, you know, about the culture of grime. So it would show trainers, uh, kind of like crep checks. And You're talking to producers more. I wanted it? to DJs. show some producers, exactly yeah. that. I wanted to show producers, like I showed skits beats, uh, making beats. I showed Mr. Slash. Sp Mr. Yeah. Slash. I showed Spyro yep. mixing. And I wanted to, you know, I wanted to just, and shed a light on people that weren't, weren't so big at the time, but I knew those people would be someone. I wanted to go that route because as I said, it took it took a whole year to make Practice Hours 2 and I had so much. So I was like, well, why not give them something sooner and quicker? And at the same time, the climate of the actual game was changing. It was, you had, uh, I remember the people we had on there, you had like, you had Scorcher on there, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, Scorcher, Revolver, Revolver T, Terminator, T, yeah. Gully Gang. Gully Gang, J Money, yeah. Ribs. Yep. Uh, the other one, Shiesty. Yeah, Shiesty Sarah Shadows, yeah. Yeah, so I had them kind of people. And as I said, the, the uh, climate was changing. Uh, me not being, I wouldn't say young, but I didn't really understand the whole YouTube aspect of it. I didn't I didn't know how, how, I was gonna, how, how it would be monet monetized. Like, how, I was just thinking, how am I gonna get paid from this? Like this giving away my stuff for free, like there's, <laughs> what about my life? That's what I was thinking, how do I eat? How do I buy a Caribbean? How do I smoke weed? How do I put petrol in my car if I'm yeah. giving this stuff away for free? Like it's just, it's not gonna work. So you're used to earning whatever you're doing with yeah. your DVD sales. Yep, yep, yep. You do practice sales one, two, yep. TV. Then YouTube's coming into play. YouTube, so by the time, as I was, as I was doing uh, the second, volume it's like PHTV PHTV yeah. so I do doing PHTV 2 PHTV volume 2 or part 2 uh how can I say it like yeah I'd, I'd studied the climate of what was actually going on at the time and I was like it's all going to YouTube I'm not giving away my stuff I'd rather just let it fizzle out mm. do you get what I'm saying so yeah I, I let it fizzle out it's as simple as that I just no, I'm not going to do it no more. I'm not. I'm not doing it anymore. YouTube culture now. Do you follow it? Do you see what's going on with these other channels? Yeah, man. I live on YouTube like that. Yeah. That that YouTube and and watching things on a computer. That's like that's TV to me. So do you feel like you could do, or do you want to do, go back into to even have a actual a YouTube channel as you didn't before? Obviously, it was DVDs. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, no, I tend to, I tend to once I've done something hard, I'd rather leave it behind and do, do something else rather than try and carry on a legacy. I mean, that's a, practice hours, that's a legacy. Uh, being one of the first DJs on Rinse, that's a legacy. Uh, doing house, that's a legacy. But I'm not going to try and rinse it or, you know, like, I don't want to go so far until it's dead. Or until I feel it's dead, like now I'm at the down downside of of it. I'd rather just leave it on a high for what it was and roll on to the next That's thing. The, so why did um you decide the practice the new practice hour series? Why did you decide to why did you decide to let that happen? The new one, I mean, if I'll be honest, uh I think 
Rince was trying to start up their their uh you know like online presence and they didn't really have much grime stuff visually so obviously genius is one of my best friends he said can i take it over can i use it i was like cool you can use it do what you need to do you know what i'm saying so i think yeah just for that for that purpose so yeah because people might have thought oh it's coming back like practice hours and name yeah. it was the same yeah. font and everything wasn't yeah, it yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah it was yeah, pretty yeah, much yeah, the same yeah, yeah so yeah people might have been getting excited and thinking oh like, no, i mean i should have done it because practice hours can't be practice hours without a plus doing it so it's practice hours done yeah practice hours is done it's done it's done it's done there will be no no practice hours do you regret anything that you filmed did you is there a moment where you thought i should have filmed that like no nah. and you didn't have your camera out or no 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 even down to the crazy titch room because i think from what i over well from what people told me um so one day titch phoned me up and he was like yeah that that clip on that dvd stopped me from getting a record deal but he was the one who well that's what i said to... that's what i said to him i said look that was you that's that's all you bro and i should put it and show you but i might not stay there i might just do it you want to see something funny bro? Was, he, like, was he angry at you he was angry yeah he was angry but it's like well what do you want to be angry at because at the end of the day i didn't tell you to show it to me you showed it to me you got it out you told me look 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 film it well you knew i was making a dvd mm. like you made your own dvd like you know what how the game goes so i don't know it's your choice i just yeah just like i don't know i just brush just brush things off and like yes yeah, it's, it's, it's cool so you got any stories like off camera what's happened like any funny stories mm. we don't want to incriminate anyone <laughs> stories uh, yeah yeah, no, nah, I'm not really. You, you know what? Because I have, but the, the ones what I'm thinking of are quite not incriminating, but they they you don't have to say the name. And the reason why this this kind of this kind of always stands out in my head is because people always used to say, like, Wiley, he's soft. Like, he's not about this, he's not about that. He's like, he's just an MC. And I used to think, uh, you, you you ain't lived the life what we've lived like we've been on the streets we've sold drugs we've been in beef we've done we've done everything everyone else has done so what makes you think just because this guy's an MC that he ain't about it do you get yeah. what I'm saying so I remember one time I think I went to check Wiley and there was a little street situation going on beforehand with uh, Merkston and Stamina and them and they was in some kind of uh, strife with someone so somehow my name had got into the mix uh and on that day when i'd went to check wiley just so happened that that person we ran into that person so the person was being quite hype they were saying they got a gun come around the corner all in one was with me he was super wary yeah like because he those the person was on like of his age so he knew of that person yeah. where that person was just my friend's little brother. And I'm like, mm. stop it, stop yeah, it. Like, yeah, yeah. behave, behave. Yeah. But then it got to a point where I'm thinking, shit, has he really got a gun? Like, he could. Yeah. He could. Like, and he's playing this game real good. I remember even Target being there on that day. And Target was saying, no, nah, just get in your car and drive and just go. And I was like, yeah, but I don't want to run off or make it seem like I'm running off. But mm, I don't. Yeah. I don't really want this beef. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? I don't want it with this kid. And then Wiley's come along and he's like, no, Troy, don't have it. Don't have it. I don't care. I'm not letting you go today. You're not going anywhere. Like, don't let this little kid intimidate you. Yeah. Like, we're not having it. And I was like, still like, nah, Bill, allow <laughs> it, allow it. And then I think Wiley just got so frustrated that he just, just broke out and just went to the boy and like, what do you mean? Like, I can remember him putting his head on the boy's head like come on then do what you're gonna do like like come let's go around the corner yeah, you're chatting yeah. shit you can't you can't do that and i was like i've been through many of them situations with wiley do you know what i'm saying yeah. where where people would think that he ain't gonna back you so i'm not i'm not trying to say that he's a he, he was a gunman or anything like that but he's not not just gonna let someone bully him or intimidate him do you know what i'm saying so was there any situations where you thought oh i want to go there no not once, like no. never. Like, no. 
No, because as I said, it's, this is music and all through my life I've, I've interacted from, with people from many areas. So like enough, one notorious area to another notorious area is no different to me. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? It's whether it's, it's in Brixton, whether it's in Harlesden, whether it's in Bow, whether it's in Hackney, like I've, I've done this thing all my life. I know that like wherever I go, I can identify with someone. Yeah. So it's going to be no problem, really. So is there anyone you wished you would have filmed? D-double. Through filming sets and filming raves, I had filmed quite a lot of D-double. And I remember one day sitting down, I was thinking, shit, man, this guy fucking gets the reloads in. Like he is so consistent out of everyone like he gets the reloads in more than anyone else. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I remember, I think I was making a uh, best 30 reloads at the end of one of the Eskimo dance DVDs. And on that DVD, there was more, more D-double reloads than anyone else. Uh, I wish I actually did get to spend a little bit more, more time with Dizzy. You uh, didn't did nah. he feature on anything apart from conflict? No, nah, he didn't. Dizzy was like a after Roll Deep was like a one man band. There's like I roll with Wiley, I'm ro- I'm Wiley's friend. Like so he probably always looked on me as he's Wiley's friend. Uh and very quickly he got big. Like I'm not gonna say he got big quickly, but in the space of the time that me meeting him and him uh, making his albums, that was like quite a short space of time. Mm-hmm. So there wasn't really that much time to interact. I mean, I spent loads of time with him, but by the time it was time, like, all right, cool, let me, f- I'm going to make this DVD. Who am I putting on? Dizzy was far, far removed. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I mean, love Dizzy like I got on with him the, the the small time that I got to interact with him like he was one of the most safest people that I, I met mm. you know what I'm saying like he was not all loud and boasty like he was a normal person going through the normal struggles like but he had that greatness mm. so yeah I think yeah I wish I'd done a bit more with him anything else you wish you would have done like maybe done a documentary just on maybe one person like a whining mm. documentary or a nah, nah, documentary nah, nah. I, I i had the i had the pick of the mill of that kind of stuff like i could have like i was offered all of those kind of things obviously things are different now like yeah back in your days it was dvds yeah and now it's all youtube based and exposure do you feel like the exposure a lot more in your face? Like people are getting millions of views. Do you feel like, what do you feel like the differences are? So I think for me, from what I can see, the main difference being is when I'm making the DVDs, I'm the A&R. Like I'm handpicking the talent and I'm showing you what I think is going to blow. Where now you got YouTube it's like the people are the A&R. You know what I'm saying? Like, people can upload as much as they want, wherever they want. And I mean, it's gonna, sh- it's, it's gonna show whether you're good, because obviously your views are gonna show. Do you feel like that's killed the scene? Like, because back in your day, it was like, it was only a select few that <laughs> could get onto your DVDs, but now anyone. Yeah, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't say, I, I wouldn't say that has actually spoiled it. I think that's, that's put the, okay. It's let's, kind of put the choice in in the viewer's hands. Do you feel like back in your day you had to be good, but now there's so anyone can basically upload a video on YouTube yeah. and people accepting rubbish. Nah, I don't because I don't. I think for me, I think the times the times change so much. Like the rate that people consume music is different. It's, it's totally different. Like, like we're living in 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 a whole different era of music. So it it, it, it has to have, it's, it has changed. It's changed a lot, but it's it's. I wouldn't say it's necessarily a bad thing. It's just the transference of 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 like who's picking the things. So whereas 
it was A&Rs that picked. The people are the A&Rs. Yeah, anyone can upload a, upload something, but that doesn't necessarily mean they're going to get a million views. People do consume music at a f- way faster rate, but still at the same time, the top tune is still going to be the top tune. Yeah. Like, whoever it be, whether it be Notes, whether it be AJ Tracy, whether it be AJ and Dino, whoever, like, that is still going to get a million views rather than the person that's not very good. You know what I'm saying? It's just a, yeah, I think the the the, the power of it has shifted of who decides who's good. Perhaps I'm big on the roads, like, as an MC, but you thought I was dead. Would yeah. you let me come on practice hours? No. No, definitely not. Like, you're only coming on if I personally think you're good. So you've never, ever had anyone on your DVD mm. because you thought, you know what, if I get these lot on it, people in South London, the Peckham lot, no, or this, these no, lot are going to no, buy it, so let no, me cater for these lot. No, the, the Hand re- on the heart, you've never done that? Never done that. So the reason how I could show you an example is Lioness. Lioness was on Practice Hours 2. I thought she was sick. Her and her mate was on it. Like, her was... and Queenie. Queenie and, yeah. and I think even maybe another two girls. Yeah. But I thought she was sick. She is only now finding her greatness. Do you know what I'm saying? So in between that, what, what was people thinking? Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I always thought she was sick. I always knew that this girl's got bars and she's got a good flow and, and she could do stuff. Do you get what I'm saying? So, yeah. But for someone who filmed it, yeah. didn't it mean that much to you at the time, maybe? Yeah, it meant a lot to me at the time, and it still means a lot to me, but I don't know. Like, I tend to make something, and once it's made and it's out there, then uh, it's just out there in the atmosphere. Like it, Not that it doesn't mean anything to me, but I'm trying to move on and do something fresh, do something new, so... I don't disregard, but yeah, I leave it in my past. Wicked. That's yeah. on Trey. Big up, argue. Big up, bruv, man.